Hey guys, Adam Hart here. Here's a bunch of useful tips and tricks to help you save time and enjoy the game more. Here we go. You can instantly do a charge jump if you set it to one of your button shortcuts. Instead of holding it to do a jump, when it's on a shortcut, you'll instantly jump, saving you time. Keep the analog stick still when you press the shortcut to jump as high as possible. This is really useful because you can do a ground strike after doing this, and you'll do the biggest shockwave possible, which knocks enemies away because of how high you get. That button shortcut allows you to get height instantly without getting hit. This is also incredibly useful for traversal as well, because you can use the charge jump instead of a quick recovery, which will propel you faster and farther than the quick recovery. Normally, to do a quick recovery, you'll press X after hitting the ground after a swing. Instead, you can just press the button shortcut while holding forward with the analog stick to go faster and farther than you normally would. Now you have to time it right because the charge jump will only work once you finish the roll animation. So wait a moment after you land to roll, then press the button shortcut. You can also do a charge jump after a point launch, which is when you press L2 and R2 together, and then you normally press X just like the quick recovery. Wait a moment just like before, then press your button shortcut. You can gain altitude super fast by dodging backwards while swinging. Hold L2, then press triangle to do a web line. Keep holding L2 until you land on your line, then press your charge jump shortcut to fling yourself up. Speaking of button shortcuts, photo mode works well on the left, and game speed on the right to enter slow-mo whenever you want, but what I found also works really well is placing the Spider-Man app on one of them. Yeah, it feels good to swipe on the touchpad to bring the app out, but using the directional buttons was useful when swinging around and pressing other buttons as I explore the city. You can lie on your own webs by shooting web lines out with L2 plus triangle, then going into photo mode and changing the poses. Now you guys can get nice photos throughout the story missions. You can skip Symbiote Ness, which you might want to do to level up fast, especially in your second playthrough to get all your skills, by switching to the Symbiote suit then switch into a different suit after starting the activity, and you'll automatically finish it. You can tell if you've dived long enough to do a loop-de-loop -loop if there's white lines coming off your hands when you begin to swing. You can save time when looking for the main story mission waypoint by having your camera snap toward the waypoint by going to camera settings and set and look at waypoint to on scan. You can get around the city much faster by doing a speed glitch. Place a game speed below 100% on one of your button shortcuts, like 30%. Let's say I place slow-mo on my right directional button. Here's the steps and I'll show them on the screen to also help you guys. Hold R2 to run along the side of a building. Right when you get to the edge, press right for slow-mo, then press and hold circle. Let go of circle and press right at the same exact time right as the camera swings around, and you'll gain a ton of speed then press X to jump off the building to make use of that extra speed you now have, and go into web wings if you want. It's pretty hard to pull off, so it might help you to let go of circle first, and then press the right direction button after that to return to the game speed, instead of doing it at the same time. And you might want to look at this tip as something you do for fun, rather than doing it to get across the map quickly to save time. It helps to do it with buildings with long walls, and here's the one I used, which is in Midtown. It takes some experimenting, but I found I get it more consistently going counterclockwise around a building than clockwise. So give both directions a try. You can free roam as a young Peter Parker by doing the photo help mission, which you unlock very early on, right here on the map in the Midtown District. When you guys get to this construction site, turn left toward this block of concrete in the fence and bike into the corner. Keep mashing X to bike into this fence, and you'll get out of this area, and you can explore the city. To get off your bike and swing around, make your way to the edge of the map by the water, right here on the map, Go down the steps and hold L2 as you do this to break, so you're accurate with turning because you can get stuck really easily. Then begin to mash X as you turn to get enough speed and you'll fly off the edge. So what you want to do as soon as you land, don't press X, but you can still move around with the analog sticks. Then press L2 and R2 to web your way out of the water, and you're free to swing around the city as a young Peter Parker. There aren't any crimes, and you can't use your web wings, but you can use the charge jump shortcut I showed you guys earlier, you can dive bomb, you can even do the speed glitch as Peter, and you can even use photo mode. It's possible you'll get out of the water but still feel the bike through your controller vibrations, and you won't be able to zip point with L2 plus R2 or swing around. If that happens, restart last checkpoint and try again. And the last thing you guys want is to look like this. So if you pull the glitch off, it's important not to land in the water, or you'll get stuck and won't be able to web out. Here's the best graphic settings in Spider-Man 2. Let's set up your game so you have your graphics and frames per second just the way you want it, so you enjoy the game to its fullest. Now guys, I'm gonna go a little slower here because I'm gonna throw a lot of useful information at you guys, and it may be confusing, but by going slower, you'll understand it better. In the graphic settings, there's two main graphic modes, which are performance and fidelity, and two modifiers, which are hertz and VRR to get the exact feel you want. Fidelity mode runs at 4K or 1440p, and performance mode runs at 1008 to 1440p, depending on what adjustments you make. Both modes have ray tracing, 
even on performance mode. For the two main graphic modes, performance mode runs at 60 FPS and a lower resolution. Fidelity mode runs at 30 FPS and a higher resolution. You can then make small adjustments like Hertz and VRR, which has an effect on both modes. You can make fidelity mode run at a higher FPS and target 40 FPS instead of 30 FPS if you set your Hertz to 120 Hertz by setting it to auto. This allows you to increase the standard FPS for fidelity from 30 to 40, but the graphics will go down closer to 1440p. Also, make sure your Hertz matches your monitor settings or your game might be out of sync like mine did when I set my Hertz to auto. So I keep my 120 Hertz display mode option to off. Here's an overview for fidelity mode. For the best graphics possible, you want to do fidelity with the display mode to off. While still on fidelity, if you want to increase your frames and decrease your graphics a little to 1440p, set your Hertz to 120, which strikes a good middle ground with smoother performance while keeping the higher visual graphics. If you want the best FPS possible, change from fidelity to performance mode, but this decreases your graphics even more. So it depends on what you want. Now let's talk about VRR more. There's a VRR option which you can set to off, smoothed, or uncapped. The smooth is the default option which smooths out any frame drops that may happen, giving a more stable experience. The uncapped goes past the recommended frames, so you'll sometimes get higher frames than usual, which might help you enjoy the game more. But this comes at the risk of having frame drops, and you'll notice them when they happen. When fidelity mode is on VRR uncapped, you'll get 40 to 60 FPS. When performance mode is on VRR uncapped, you'll get between 60 and 80 FPS. Now in terms of VRR's relationship to graphics, VRR on smooth doesn't affect the visuals, but selecting the uncapped option can make your resolution go down a bit, even on performance mode. It's up to personal preference, but this is what I recommend for you guys. You either do performance mode with the hertz set to auto or off, and the VRR set to smooth for a good resolution, and a stable 60 FPS, or fidelity mode with the hertz set to 120 to get 40 fps instead of 30 fps if your monitor runs at 120 but setting the hertz to that makes the graphics go down a bit to 1440p but the fps increase will feel good and the vrr set to smooth no matter what you do guys you can't really go wrong because it's a beautiful game now you can enjoy the story with settings that are perfect for you moving on to our next tip you want to make a manual save when you get to the mission don't be scared because and this might be a spoiler warning, so heads up if you want to pause the video and come back at a later time, you get to play as Venom. And you might want to replay this mission just because it's Venom. But also, if you decide to do the Venom glitch when you go up a building, when you go outside for the first time in Times Square, and you're able to jump off and then free run the city. Now instead of telling you guys you can just go to my channel and check it out, I'll explain it really quick here. To do the glitch, turn left and go up the black wall to the left of that blue sign. Keep mashing X and you'll go up the wall. Once you get to the roof, just go toward the next wall in front of you and go up. Then just go up the building you see in front of you with the big sign. When you get to the top, go forward against the wall, then turn left and hug the wall as you move around the corner because there's an invisible wall there. Then just jump off the roof and you are good to go. You can free roam as Venom. Now there's a lot of invisible walls around the area, so to get past them, hug the side of the building and keep mashing X, and you'll be able to get past it. If you keep having trouble, try a different street. Once you get past them, there won't be any more invisible walls around the city, they're just all clustered around Times Square. And since we're on the topic of manual saves, if you want to free roam at nighttime, there's a mission near the end of a game that you can make a manual save for, so you can explore the city at night while having a higher level and lots of skills and abilities. I believe after you complete the mission, anything can be broken. That's the last time you can explore when it's nighttime, or at the very least, it's a late nighttime mission, so you have a lot of skills and abilities, and you can explore at night. So after you complete the mission, anything can be broken, make a manual save, and then you can always return to that save to free roam at night. And speaking of nighttime and changing the time of day, if you'd like to change the time of day, this is how to do it. First, make a manual save, since we'll do a glitch to achieve this. You should always do manual saves before glitches. Go to a mysterium, and as soon as you walk in, open the map right away by pressing the touchpad, then press triangle to replay. Pause the game as soon as the trial loads, then abandon the trial. You don't have to wait for the countdown timer but it also works when you do it on the countdown timer. So pause the game as soon as the trial loads, then abandon the trial. When you return to the open world, you have changed the time of day. Now some mysteriums will change to different times of day, like nighttime or dusk, and some are sunset. And some don't work at all because they show the map is offline. You can change to nighttime if you go to the Mysterium Invisible Enemy in the Midtown District. You can change back to daytime by going to Prison Break in the Upper East Side. 
but it'll be overcast and raining if you do that one. The only way you can return to daytime with clear weather is to use a manual save that I recommended you guys did. You can change the time to sunset by going to fight on time in Chinatown, and you can change the time to morning by going to everyone's a critic. The rest of the mysteriums won't work, or at least they didn't for me, and will show your map as offline, so you can't change the time of day, but you can change the time of day on the ones I listed. There's not an official option to do this, but it'll surely come in an update. I'm sure they've seen tons of people ask for it. And the next tip, you can get really high in the sky and fly with a plane, which also earns you XP super fast to help you level up, which is useful in your second playthrough by unlocking the skills Spider Jump, Spider Dash, Aerial Escapades, which charges the Spider Jump and Dash, and the Traversal skill Active Spider, which increases the height of the Spider Jump and Dash. Make sure you're Peter since he goes up higher with the Spider Jump and Dash. Now you're ready to go up into the sky. First, do the Swing Shot Launch to give you a boost. Do the Spider Jump and the Spider Dash. Hold square, then mash triangle to refill the spider jump and dash. Then you'll hear the ability's refill sound. Then do the spider jump and dash to launch yourself higher. Repeat the steps. So hold square, then mash triangle again until your spider jump and dash are ready. Don't move the left analog stick at all when holding square and mashing triangle so you don't end up doing other air tricks. And this means your left hand is free to mash triangle. Place game speed on one of your button shortcuts if you need help. You'll also get tons of XP fast when doing this, and a trophy if you haven't done this many air tricks in a row before. To make sure you get XP for your air tricks, wait a moment after doing the spider jump, then when you see the XP notification on screen, go back to holding square for air tricks. You can do this early in the game or even in your second playthrough, which sort of makes it new game plus, because you're gonna level up really fast and get all your skills back. You'll unlock your suit tech first, so you have to focus on traversal skills to get active spider, and then once your skill tree opens up, you can get Spider Jump, Spider Dash, and Aerial Escapades. Then you can hit the sky and earn XP fast, level up fast, and unlock tons of skills and upgrade your suit tech to be really powerful. And there you guys have it. Thanks so much for watching these tips and tricks to help you enjoy the game more. If you guys need help with anything or have any tips to share, leave a comment or join our Discord. We're close to 30,000 subscribers, and I just want to thank you guys for all your time, because once time is gone, you can't get it back. So thanks for watching my videos and this video right here as well. I have more Spider-Man 2 tips and free roams on my channel, which you can see on the screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.